talk about Michael Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. Now, for people who don't know, Michael Faraday was an early pioneer in the study of electricity, and he developed a series of laws. The first one being, if the flux linking the loop varies as a function of time, a voltage will be induced between its terminals. So today, we're going to do a series of demonstrations to try and solidify that a deeper understanding in today's terms, as well as he developed a second rule, and that was the value of induced voltage is proportional to the rate of change of flux. In plain English, we're going to go and explain that through our, our process and our demonstrations. In order to facilitate today's demonstration, I have assembled for you three different coils of wire. The first one, I've got five loops of wire in this core. The second one, I've doubled the amount of loops for 10. And finally, I've assembled and wound it onto this plastic core several loops of wire. We're going to be using these magnets here to provide us with the magnetic flux. And what's special about this meter is it's registered to read millivolts but more specifically is that it's got a zero center. So the cursor aligns perfectly so it lets us know the polarity of the voltage that we're going to be inducing. So let's get to work. So here we are. I've got three coils of wire. I've got these magnets that are stacked to provide us with magnetic flux and I've got a voltmeter that currently will register millivolts and it's got a zero center. Now the first thing is I've already gone ahead and hooked up this coil to the meter and as I introduce magnetic flux in the center of this coil you'll notice if I do it slowly you'll see that there's a deflection of the needle but I'm barely producing one millivolt. In order to magnify the effect, I'm going to switch this 5-turn coil for the 10-turn coil. So let's do that. According to Michael Faraday's laws, if I increase the number of turns in the loop, I'm going to produce more voltage. So let's try. Using the exact same magnetic flux, I'm going to introduce the magnetic flux and pull it out. And what we can see is by doubling the number of turns of wire, I am increasing the amount of voltage that's being induced. You'll also notice that the deflection of the needle corresponds with how I'm introducing the magnetic flux. If I put the magnet in, the needle deflects to the right. If I pull the magnet out, the needle deflects to the left. So I'm actually inducing two different types of polarity into this coil. Positive, negative. Positive, negative. Now, in order to um, prove that we can increase the amount of induced voltage, because right now we're only inducing maybe two and a half volts, what if we transferred to this larger coil that has many more turns of wire and see what the results will be. Now it's important to note that this wire actually had an invisible film on it which had to be stripped off. So that's why we have a different color. Now I'm going to hold it at this angle and we're going to repeat this. But now we've got many more turns of wire. This spool has been completely filled up and let's have a look at what the result will be as it registers on our voltmeter. So we go in, quite a bit of deflection there, and as I withdraw it, now why was this different? It's probably because I picked up the magnets and I wasn't paying attention to the polarity. As a result, as I push it in, the needle deflects to the left. As I withdraw the magnet, it withdraws uh, it deflects to the right. Please note that there has to be continuous motion. So 
as long as we have continuous motion, I will constantly be inducing voltage. But the minute I stop movement, there's no induced voltage. Hence the reason why you have to have continuous cutting action. Now, it's also important to note, in order to maximize the amount of induced voltage, we need to be cutting in a perpendicular fashion. If I was waving the magnets across, yes, we are inducing, but I'm not inducing the same amount of voltage as if I was inserting it and cutting the entire coil. Right now, I'm only cutting just maybe some of the half of the coils or turns on the surface here, but nothing's happening back here. So to be more efficient, whether it's up, down, to the side, we are inducing voltage, but it's very inefficient. We need to maximize the induced voltage by cutting it in a perpendicular fashion. In order to demonstrate Michael Faraday's second law that the value of the induced voltage is going to be proportional to the rate of change of the flux, I've got this set up. Now this is a tiny generator and we're using a small toy electric motor powered from a DC power supply to provide us with that cutting action. What I want to prove is that the amount of induced voltage is going to be relative or proportional to how fast we can actually turn or drive this little generator. Now the generator is hooked up via these two brushes that are going to be, uh, that is hooked up to our analog multimeter and is currently set on a 2.5 volt scale. So we should be able to produce about a volt to a volt and a half with this setup. Now the magnetic flux, well that's going to come from this permanent magnet up here. Now, you'll see the north and the south. The south, all of this metal strap will be magnetized, same as on this side, and the turns of wire are located just on the inside here. And so there are the loops of wire. We'll have our magnetic flux and then our cutting action provided by this motor. Here we are. I'm going to proceed to turn on the power supply and bring up the voltage and I've got to give the motor a little bit of a, a helping hand to get it turning. There, that's about where I'd like it, just for starters. Now you'll notice the motor is providing us with the mechanical turning force to this small generator. We have the three items that are going to allow us to induce or create a voltage. I've got magnetic flux. I've got the turns of wire that are located on the inside of the machine, as well as the turning action or the cutting action. Here, my multimeter is set up at the output side of it, and I'm going to pan over to the right, and let's look at how much voltage is being produced right now. You'll see on the 2.5 volt scale, I'm about 7 volts right here. If I was to increase one of the variables, according to the theory, I should increase the output voltage that is being induced. Let's swing back here at our generator setup. The magnetic flux, due to the fact I have permanent magnets, the magnetic flux is fixed. I can't increase it unless I was to change the size of the magnets and that's not very practical. The other parameter I could adjust would be the turns of wire. Well, this has already been built. I, I fail to see the logic in trying to rewind something that's already been built. The only other parameter that I could alter would be the turning force, the speed of the cutting action. By making subtle adjustments here at this power supply to this motor, I can increase the input voltage to the motor. 
it will start to turn faster. So let's have a look. So you can see, as I increase the voltage, there we go, a little bit more. Small increments. And now the audio should pick up that we are moving a lot faster. The camera should be able to see that the speed of rotation has picked up. And as I pan to the right and we look at the multimeter, we can see that I am now producing almost a full volt of electricity. But what if I continue to increase the voltage? What would happen? In theory, I should see the voltage increase. So I'm going to increase the voltage. Now you may be able to hear the motor spinning faster and you'll register an increase on the multimeter. But we're going to approach what we would call the saturation point of the core of the generator meaning that the, the turns of wire were wrapped around a ferromagnetic core to increase the flux density. And if I continue to bring up the speed, what will happen is the combination of output voltage and current will be too high that the saturation point of the core will be reached and we'll see a decline in my output voltage. So here goes. And you can see that my my voltage is starting to drop. We can see, as I pan to the left here, that my generator is spinning faster and faster. I can hear that it's spinning faster as well. and But my output voltage is steadily dropping. And here's proof. In theory, I was going much, much slower, and I was producing more voltage. So what happens is, you're hitting the saturation point because of the fact it's trying to produce too much current, and the voltage starts to suffer. And there we go. So as I slowed down, we saw that our voltage got progressively lower and lower and lower. I hope you found today's video both informative and engaging. It's really important that you have a sound understanding of what inductors are as they touch our lives each and every day from the traffic lights when we drive our vehicles to power generation. Until next time, please stay safe.